one thing I'm very, very much against is el the elitism that sometimes is associated with jazz. That to me, like things like VVIP lounges and all that, that's crap. It should be done away with. Why have certain people, what, we're all listening to the same music, right? So why must others be sitting slightly softer chairs compared to the others? People have asked us in the, in the native life, like, yeah, is there like a, a, a lounge, like is there a VIP lounge? No, you sit with everybody else. That's how you're gonna be, you know, mixing and being socially cohesive. Otherwise, we might as well, you know, sort of have uh, different spaces for different audiences. I mean, that wouldn't be social, would that be? No, it wouldn't. That wouldn't be jazz. That would definitely be jazz. That would be completely, I don't know what kind of music that would be. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, my name is Koko and Kalashi, and I'm a native of Cape Town. I've uh, been schooled here most of my high school, etc. And then moved to uh, Joburg for training. I'm a medical technologist by training. But I'd, I've always been attracted to music and mostly cultural events. From when I was young, I saw the potential of culture changing people's attitude or cultural events or people learning about other people's culture, you know, changing their attitude towards situations, other people, etc. And so when I semi-retired, I came back to Cape Town. I decided that I would um, uh, hone in on my love for jazz and particularly on my love for jazz ability to gather people around, create conversations, uh, question status quo. I mean, I didn't personally grow up in a jazz home, etc. but I caught jazz from my visiting friends, their relatives, and also just associating with friends who had records of, uh, of jazz. And uh, it was much later, like in my high school years, that I was uh, stationed in PE. And my older nephews then loved jazz, and they took me to most of the concerts they could get tickets to. So my love for the genre then grew then. And I could see, as I said, you know, the ability of jazz to just cut through the prejudice, you know, color, etc. And so when I came back to Cape Town, I thought, well, I used to, in in the late 70s, maybe 80s, when I was about 17 or so, I used to have a, a, a part-time job in town. And then I would stay in town to go and, you know, snoop around the clubs in town. And that's also where I, almost jazz kind of took me in. I mean, as a young black uh, boy, as probably sometimes it would be the only black person in the audience. But the people on stage were mostly black. <laughs> it was like, this doesn't feel kind of right. And then I'd learned, obviously, you know, some people were finding it too far to, to come. And if they had to drink, sometimes they wouldn't have transport going back, etc. So there were like these limitations of this separate development and this um, spatial planning that was not conducive to cultural exchange and socializing. And I thought, this is like so anti-jazz, you know? So when I came back to Cape Town, I thought, well, you know what? Let's create a, a, a space in the township. And for a change, people can come into the township and come and listen to jazz. So create that space of jazz excellence and enjoyment, etc. And that's why uh, Nuvu and I thought, you know, the jazz listening clubs, which we found around Cape Town, were not doing exactly that. They were just friends coming together to listen to each other's records. Whereas if you brought musicians together, those musicians would bring friends and family, etc. And so people would meet new people, you know. And so that's how jazz and native arts grew. Social cohesion sort of happened. And also there were local musicians to be recognized, which uh, in the early years we did that a lot. To an extent that we got into a situation where uh, musicians from Guglietti and others like, yeah, but this is jazz in native yards, this is like our space. It's like, no, no, no. It is in the native yards, but it's not necessarily just for musicians in the native yards. It's from musicians from all over the place. And soon we got calls from guys from Switzerland, from Germany, from Singapore. So it's like, we're traveling in South Africa, we heard about you, your spaces, and how great it, it feels with all those cultures coming together to come and listen to jazz can we come and play and before we knew it there were then 
French Swiss and Singaporean guys from Cambodia coming to play. Yeah, it, it became like an interesting eclectic space where cultures came together, people were loving the same sound. And so we kind of cleverly sort of curated the bands that were playing there. Well, like new stuff, album launches, young bands, older bands. Uh, uh, bands, older musicians collaborating with young musicians. So we brought different ages and 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 persuasions around about jazz, etc. So it wasn't all about Brenton trousers and and Flosham shoes, <laughs> and, and cigar smoking and uh, whiskey drinking. It was more about you know people coming to learn more about each other. Uh, but of course, the music was the centerpiece that we made sure wasn't forgotten in the thing, because otherwise, you know, one can go to a shibin and just listen to music. So things like creating a, a listening space where young musicians who've never been maybe on stage, etc., can feel important, you know, to perform. And soon enough, we learned about young musicians coming off the School of Music at uh, at UCT. So we invited them to come and play. And as they were graduating, writing music, doing album launches, etc., we thought, well, if there was new jazz or sounds in town, they have to first hear it in the native yards, you know. Yeah, so we were out hunting for new talent all the time. And of course, not forgetting the, you know, the old timers, etc., which we played now and again. But we're looking for people like McCoy and Freya, etc. We're looking for local talent. I was like taken aback when Freya said the first and the last time he played in Guguleti was with uh, Mankun Kungus. Like, wow, really? I mean, this is like this world famous guy who's played everywhere, but in Gooks, he only just played with Mankungu. Anyway, you know. That's now in the past. I mean, Jazz Native Yards is not only in Google, but it's in Langa. We also take the music to the CBD, some spaces like uh, the Athletic and Social Club. We also um, go into the cultural centers like the Alliance Francaise, etc. That's mining spaces and people. In the future, we'll also be going into the parks. Because for a long time, we were like, ah, let's keep small, you know, manageable, etc. But more people are wanting to come and listen. And if we have a social cohesion objective, we need to take the music to the people. So, yeah, and that's, that's what Jazz Native has, has done for me, for Luvuyo, and for the public. Well, Cape Town is, is, uh, is a very divided city. The special planning here, well, in most cities in South Africa, it's like that. You know, you get the white people in the center of the city where most of the economic activity is. And then you get the colored and, and Indian people slightly out of the city with often easy access, you know, into the CBD. And then you get uh, black people further and further and further away and they, they just become labor reserves, you know, those townships and with not much economic activity. For a long time, even still now, the kind of planning that goes on in the city of Cape Town is crazy, where you build more RTB houses out in Makassar, etc., instead of looking at how you can bring people into the economic hub, create some spaces for social uh, housing, etc. It's crazy that we still have this apartheid mentality around building. So let's rather than use the music, the cultural events, etc., to let people see how the other half lives and where they live, like getting people to come to the township and then get uh, black people who otherwise feel unwelcomed, which often happens. I mean, we see this reported in newspapers every day. Somebody has an uh, arbitration with um, restaurant management, etc., because they were not served, you know, etc., and ignored, blah, 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 etc. So the music kind of dispel all of that. I mean, just tone down the, the, the divide between people. So that's the one objective, besides obviously giving musicians an, a, a, a space to play so that they get paid. I mean, the social cohesion is like a personal, emotional sort of thing that we got in onto, but we convince that like in the 50s, etc., people were mingling and getting to know each other through the music. And jazz just seems to be the right medium for that because it's calming. You not only just arrive with your friends and only just 
interact with your friends, but people comment around the hall about the music, etc., and you get to meet them so much easier as compared to the other genres, which are like sometimes a bit clicky. So the social cohesion thing is a deliberate part of jazz and native arts. And fortunately, we've managed to portray that without much fanfare and talking about it like we do now. But people recognize it. When they saw it, they thought, wow, we like what these guys are doing. We want to be part of this cohesiveness you know, around jazz. We started off, I mean, in the, in the township, and the idea was to get the locals to come and listen to the musicians around, and also to listen to musicians from other parts of the world, right? And then, for a long time, there was more people from outside of the township than the locals. And then we thought, hmm, is there a problem maybe with our pricing? Or are people feeling that this kind of music is not for them? Is the space too grand for locals? You know, what, what are we doing wrong? And then soon enough, we realized that the way we curate the music and the bands that are coming is important so that people come and listen to artists that they are familiar with. People like Makoi Mkhubata, Faya Faku and others. So when they hear McCoy is coming to play, it's like, wow, but I know that bra, he used to live, you know, NY79 or whatever, and I definitely will come bring my friends. And so then we started seeing this balance of people from outside and people who uh, are coming to listen to sounds that they were, they were familiar with, you know. And then interspersed with that, we played guys from Switzerland, from Germany and all that. So we were kind of listening to different kind of genres within jazz. And also we're mindful of the pricing. As the music became more appreciated, pricing obviously has climbed a little bit as well. The whole idea is that people should learn to pay to appreciate art. Yeah, now our audience is really represented, even in spaces like the Alliance Francaise. For a long time it was people who just lived within the city. But now we're getting people who work in the city, stay over and listen to the music. Well, obviously, the small-scale jazz concerts we want to keep, but the big one is have a festival that people will get to see Cape Town through. Jazz festival where people come to the venues instead of just one venue. People get into buses, trains, taxis, whatever, drive themselves to different parts of the city, including the township to come and listen to jazz. That is what we want to leave behind. And talking about living behind, we're very passionate about other people starting their own in their little, in their own backyard. And hence, we're branching out or going to the spaces like Amazink just outside Stellenbosch to have rolling concerts involving School of Music at Stellenbosch, some local talent, bring one or two musicians from outside. But the idea is to activate this and create this curiosity around local music and the appreciation thereof.